welcome to this session. This session, you're going to solve a problem which involves a case of having complex eigenvalues and eigenvectors. And the problem is related to solution of systems of first order differential equations, which are usually written in the form x dot equals to ax. So <coughs> our matrix A is two, three, minus two and two. So the first step is to get the eigenvalues of this matrix A. So solution. Here, A matrix is two, three, minus two, minus three, Two. <clears throat> so we first get the eigen values of the matrix A. So we get this one by solving A minus lambda I equals to zero. This determinant of a minus lambda i. So it will be determinant of two minus lambda, three minus three, two minus lambda equals to zero. Uh, this being a two by two determinant, we'll have two minus lambda, two minus lambda, minus minus plus, plus b, product of main, main diagonal elements minus product of other diagonal elements. So this nine. So two by two is four, minus two lambda, minus two lambda, plus lambda squared plus nine equals to zero. So we'll have lambda squared minus four lambda, four plus nine is 13. So use quadratic formula, lambda will be minus b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. In this problem, our a is 1, our b is minus 4, our c is positive 13. So lambda will be minus b, so minus minus 4 is positive 4 plus or minus b squared minus four squared is 16 minus four times one is four times 13. So four by 13 is 52. So minus 52 divided by two a, two times one is two. So 16 minus 52 is minus 36. over two, and you see minus that six. So minus that six can be written as minus one times that six. So which means square root of minus that six, the same as square root of minus one times <coughs> that six, which is the same as square root of minus one times square root of that six. This is six and square root of minus one is i. So i times six is six i. So lambda will be four plus or minus six i divided by two, which will be two plus or minus three i. So you see we have complex eigenvalues. So, for case of complex eigenvalues to find eigenvectors is a very easy step because you just do it once and you get all the two eigenvalues V and W. So next, we find eigenvectors. 
<coughs> so we have lambda, take the positive one, you have two plus three i. And the beauty with complex eigenvalues is that you use one and then it will give you the two eigenvalues that you need if you're dealing with a two by two matrix. So let the eigen vector be given by u1, u2. So we know we have to, if this is an eigen vector, then it has to satisfy this equation. So A matrix is two, three, minus three, two. U is U1, U2. Lambda is two plus three I. And then U is U1, U2. Now, so this will be two U1 plus three, u2 minus 3 u1 plus 2 u2 equals now this be 2 u1 plus 3 u1 i and then 2 u2 <coughs> plus 3 u2 i just more time this value by u1 and u2. Now for this equal sign to make sense, both the first row and the second rows should be the same. So this implies two u1 plus three u2 equals to two u1 plus three u1i and minus three u1 plus two u2 should be two u2 plus three u2 i. And you see in this first one, this and this cancels out. So this implies three u2 equals to three u1 i. For this one, <coughs> this and this cancels out minus three u1 equals to three u2i. And similarly, this, if you call this one one, this one two, you say from one, u2 equals to u1i. And from, <coughs> two minus u1 equals to u2 i. I remember this two are just the same thing. This equation and this equation have the same. Meaning, so if we let And this second equation here, from this one here, if I let u1 to be t, then it means that u2 will be ti. So remember this t is a non-zero real number. So uh, the vector u, be given by u1, u2, and u1, the answer we have said, let it be t, and u2 is t, i. Remember, i is the complex unit, which you can factor out t and have one i, and then you have t. t is a real <laughs> number that is not zero. Now, setting 
k to be one, we say u equals to u one, u two equals to one i. But you see, <coughs> this can be written as, these are complex eigenvector, so it can be written as one, zero, plus zero i. You see, when you add these two vectors, you get one i. So which gives us u is equals to one, zero. Can factor out i, <coughs> zero, one. So this is what we called V and this is what we call W. So U is V plus I W. So therefore the solution <coughs> X of T, which is given by E raised power lambda T times U will be e raised power, lambda, we have taken lambda to be two plus three i. So remember when you use one, uh, the conjugate comes in uh, by default. So two plus three i times t and then times u vector, which is e raised power two, T plus three Ti. And then we have this U vector is given by one, or let me just write this step by step. So remember, uh, this means that V vector is one zero and W vector is zero one. <coughs> so I just write V plus I W, this is what defines U. And this will give me E raised power two T e raised power 3ti into v, which is 1, 0. One, zero plus i w is 0, 1. So we'll have, this is X of T. E raised power two T. This by Euler's identity, E raised power theta I is equals to cosine of theta plus I sine theta. And theta for this case, we have three T. So I'll have cosine of three T plus I sine 3T and then times one zero plus I zero one. <coughs> so E raised power two T is common. So this by this will have one zero cosine of three T plus i zero one cosine of three t and then plus i one zero sine of three t i times i is minus one so I have minus zero one sine of three t 
So this is x of t. So x of t will be e raised power 2t into now. This will give us cosine of 3t, 0. And then this other real part will be plus now 0 negative sine 3t. <coughs> then plus i e raised power 2t into this one will have 0 cosine of 3t plus this one, because I already factored out, I will be sine 3t, sine times 0 is 0. And so x of t will be e raised to power 2t. Now adding these two vectors will have cosine of 3t minus sine of 3t plus i e raised power 2t. This will give us sine 3t. This will be cosine of 3t. So this is what we call, so uh, this is the x1 of t. And this part is the x2 of t. And by superposition principle, x of t is given by c1 x1 of t plus c2 x2 of t. So therefore, x of t will be c1 e raised power 2t into cosine of 3t minus sine of 3t plus <coughs> c2 e raised power 2t into sine of 3t and then cosine of 3t. So now this i is within uh, this color. So this becomes the solution, general solution of that given differential equation in the problem. So if you are given the initial conditions, then you can as well go ahead and find the specific values of C1 and C2. Thank you.